written into the constitution as applicable to the state of Jammu and Kashmir only by CA 48 of 1954. Correct. So constitution was amended, which was 30, that was 370. You can amend the constitution or you can apply existing provisions. Under C70, a CO was issued and which brought in, in a sense, uh, 35. Correct. But as I pointed out, whenever the situation required it, 370 remained floating. Whenever some changes were required, depending upon the circumstances, they were made through the mechanism of 367. 367 is an interpretation clause. So the interpretation was made. At that time, there was no legislative. No, it was Malod, to be made immediately. Therefore, Malod, in advance, Malod, they must have made a provision. There was none. Malod. This is 54. So there was none. Because the constitution was framed in 57. So in terms of giving representation to the state in other forms, it would require a uh, constituent assembly to be interchangeably used so that Till the Constituent Assembly finalized something, it would not… Uh, no, Malod, another purpose is that till the Legislature Assembly comes, Legislative, legislative Assembly comes, somebody will have to make laws, other laws, other than Constitution. They, they were made. The Constituent Assembly, after this, functioned as a Legislature of Jammu and Kashmir also. And they made other laws also. I have given the list. It was primarily to ensure enforcement of 370 Article sub our uh, clause one, which power was vested with the legislative assembly, so they vested it with the constituent assembly. constituent assembly, so that laws can be made by the constituent assembly. Otherwise, my Lord, constituent assembly is not a law-making body in that sense. Of course, my submission is that constitution of Jammu and Kashmir is at par with the legislature, legislation only. It's not, my Lord, a kind of a constitution as we understand, my Lord, as a document of governance. The State Reorganization Act comes. It does two things. One, Part A and Part B states are clubbed into one called states. So Jammu and Kashmir ceased to be Part B, but it became a state like any other state. And Part C states became union territories. That is first. So A and B became states and C and D became union territories. We are not concerned with that right now in this matter. Second was the identity of princely states was completely abolished. Till then, till 56, uh, uh, the Raj Pramu was the erstwhile princely ruler. This was abolished. That now henceforth it would be the governor appointed by the president of India. The president who is responsible to the parliament and the parliament who is responsible to we the people of India. So now no Raj Pramukh who is the princely state. He, he can be appointed as a governor. That's one thing. Some of them were appointed, but not by virtue of they being a member of that lineage in the princely states. But this happened. But at this stage, Article 238 was repealed, rather omitted, not repealed, but it was omitted by 7th Constitutional Amendment. 171156. The constitution of the state of Jammu and Kashmir is framed. The document called constitution of Jammu and Kashmir is framed. That's all. I have my lord given excerpts from the debates which essentially says that Jammu and Kashmir is an integral part of India. I don't think that is something which is uh, lord, required to be labored much. Therefore, I am not skipping. Okay, you that also. Yes, my lord, no, no, therefore, I am skipping that. The second use of the mechanism under Article 367. Your Lordships would recall, in the first use, the Honorable President said, Constituent Assembly and Legislative Assembly are used interchangeably. But at this stage, the Constituent Assembly ceased to exist because the Constitution was formed, framed. Phraseology use was Governor henceforth from this. Yes, henceforth it was Governor. But the physiology used to head of the elected government as Prime Minister did not cease with this. I beg your Lordship's pardon. Chief Minister used to be called the Prime Minister there. Yeah, that, that went Malod, after Sadre Riyasat itself. It became Sadre Riyasat. Prime Minister went. It became Sadre Riyasat and thereafter Malod Raj Pramukh and thereafter uh, Governor. Now it, it remains Governor throughout thereafter. But in this very proceedings when there was a request for a reference to a larger bench in this very petition. Lord, the five judge bench, uh, Lord, uh, speaking through my Lord Justice call, exactly said this. 
that it may not have bearing on the either side. Now, my lord, page 69. Now, my lord, the integration of judiciary. Slowly, my lord, some provisions came to be applied, truncated, some full, some modified, some with exceptions. But Article 222 was made applicable regarding transfer of judges. Earlier, my lord, till 60, the honorable judges of the High Court were not transferable by the Supreme Court. But the oath was prescribed and till 2019, the honorable judges of Jammu and Kashmir High Court used to subscribe to this oath, my lord. Please see. Oath or affirmation to be made by judges of the High Court. I, Sri so and so, having been appointed Chief Justice or a judge of the High Court of Jammu and Kashmir, do swear in the name of God, solemnly affirm that I will be, bear true faith and allegiance to the constitution of the state. Though they were Malod, under an obligation because of Article 1, and they were emplo, Malod, uh, applying the constitution of India, but the oath which they used to take was expressing their allegiance to the constitution of Jammu and Kashmir state. Even the Honorable Chief Justice who would be appointed there Malod, would be uh, taking this oath. That's it, Malod. There's nothing beyond. Just as an aside, Malad, during these debates, Malad, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru intervened and he said, if you talk about outsiders buying land in Jammu Kashmir, I am totally opposed to it because big business will come in, Malad, and will destroy the entire state completely. So he was very adamant on that. That was a mistake, Malad. I'm my sure it was is a right, mistake. Malad. I'm only saying that was uh, those my my right. be read. Those parts, I'm not saying that. That, that Malod, uh, Everything that we did was always a mistake. Malod. No, 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 I'm not being political, Malod. I'm from citizens' point of view. Unless investment comes, you, you never develop. Why it did not culminate into something? That's Just for the record for that debate, 23 for, 157 against, 160 pages of debate. Guzari Nananda says that you cannot change 370 till you follow 370. So all that, well, what is do, what is happening is we expanding all this, which is not part of. Uh, of so I may I right. may assure my learned friend. Well, at least you should point the facts out. Lord, there is no intention, mother. Uh, everyone, we were led by eminent people. Everyone contributed. There is no mother, undermining the contribution of anyone. Mother. The only purpose was voting may differ. This was the view consistently explained, and you know, my only purpose of reading was, this is how the country treated it as temporary, that's all. My learned friend may take any other meaning out of it. Everyone contributed, but even 370 must have come with good intention of integrating the nation. The purpose of reading the debate was, and is, you know, I'm, I'm not reading it now, that it was conceived from the beginning as a temporary provision. That's all. You know, that not, not to undermine anyone's contribution. So, if an authority contemplated under Article 370 ceases to exist, it can be replaced by the successor or the closest possible successor under 367. Uh, CEOs, in fact, were amending Article 356 because that prescribes three years. President's rule. No, I'm, I'm sorry, man. These were then extending the president rule as prescribed in the article 356 because the period prescribed is three years maximum. But it kept on being extended by the by parliament. The CEOs, it was extended from three to four, four to five. Uh, it can go up to seven months because parliament will have to then uh, extend it. Because situation was Manod, in a, it was an extraordinary situation. During that period, it was at the... No, I'm not on that. I'm not on that that the power to amend was excised in terms of 356, notwithstanding the proviso to... Uh, yes, your lordships are right, that was done. 368, notwithstanding yeah. the proviso to... Yeah, yeah, yes, But the body is challenged? No, they were never, never challenged. No, no, not challenged. Can you invoke section 92 after 36, article 356 was made applicable? No, article 356 came subsequent. Y yes, yes. Nobody raised that issue. But subsequently 356 comes. No, so I'm if just, there was, yeah, I, I understand not the query. Even if there was an irregularity which is caught subsequently by 356. After 6. I'm just saying that. But your lordships are right. The, you know, that is the reason why 
ultimately i would show my lord the constitution of jammu and kashmir required to be repealed because it can never coexist once you apply the entire constitution you you cannot have a situation where there is a separate document of governance operating it was my lord according to me it's a separate argument a legis piece of legislation but your lord chief sir right they have been directly under 356 your lord chief sir absolutely right and so mr when you say the contradiction the very fact that you invoke section 96 92 92 and not 356 you accepting that both of them can coexist qua uh, 92 yes otherwise but there are several provisions which which i'll be able to demonstrate but not in any case that's that's not a separate uh, submission on that not why how jammu and kashmir constitution would not exist the moment not 370 sub article 3 is invoked but the logic sir right can argue but other way also there are other arguments available to make that argument Correct. or that submission today there is no challenge to the dissolution of the sm the petitions which were filed after 5th and 6th of resolution also takes place in the constitution of india as applicable to jammu and kashmir the lordship sir the petition which mr sibal argued argued mohammad akbar loan is a petition filed by two members of parliament belonging to national conference mohammad akbar loan and uh, one another member no challenge either to the governor's rule president's rule or dissolution of legislative assembly one ia is filed by the former chief minister argued by ms ramkrishnan in 9 in 2022 ia for impeachment so no political party challenges either governor's rule or president's rule uh, or dissolution of assembly contemporaneously dissolution not challenged at all otherwise your lordships are aware my lord your lordships are disturbed even at the middle of the night that now we are ready to forge an alliance and we are ready to form a stable government because there were several arguments were made on that that how can the assembly be dissolved like that i am just not pointing out the hollowness of that argument 